So we can find colors in nature. It's very interesting in ways that we can use these colors to make pigments. This was done for ages in ancient times and the Renaissance times. So let's just look at a few things that you can use that you might have around the house. Coffee. Coffee grounds might make a nice brown. Tea. These are called rose hips. You can find them on roses. After the flower has died away, they have these little berries. And this is a piece of brick. Maybe some dust that you get from bricks can also make a color. But today what we're going to concentrate on are four colors. Yellow, made with mustard and a seasoning called turmeric. Hopefully a pink color with flowers. And a blue color with blueberries. And then green with grass. Now you want to find something to grind up. Some people have a pestle and mortar, but I just looked at a few things around my house to find some things that maybe I could use in place of that since I didn't have one. And I assume most people may not have one around the house. Maybe an old coffee cup that's broken or a bowl that's broken that your parents don't use. Make sure you ask before you use any of these things. This is a wooden bowl that I found that also might work. But I decided to use an old bowl that I have that my dog used to use for water but doesn't use them anymore. And then a rock. Now what we want to do is we want to crush these materials so that we can extract some of the pigments out of them. So the first thing you want to do is kind of grind up, just smash it with a rock, your material. And this takes a little bit of time but just keep mashing. You see that some of the green is coming out on my rock. So I'm going to start with the grass and we're going to keep mashing that up and then I'll show you the next step. So now I've mashed up all my grass and I'm just going to dump it into a piece of cloth. You can use a cheesecloth. You can see the grain coming out of there. Now the reason I want to dump this into a cloth is because I want to squeeze all of the green pigment out of the grass and leave the grass behind. I don't want the grass in my paint. So I'll take this and I'll squeeze as good as I can, get all the colors out that I can get. And now you can see that I have this nice green color. And I'm going to put it in this small glass so you can see it. You can use a bigger glass, obviously. We'll just put that in there and we have some green. this mess up. When you're doing this, you want to make sure to have a tablecloth, a plastic tablecloth or covering so you don't get this all over your, your table. And make sure you have some paper towels and things so you can wipe up any mess because you don't want your mom and dad getting angry about having a mess all over their kitchen table. Nature provides spices and colors and over the years people have figured out how to use them. For example, I'm going to use mustard. Mustard comes from a mustard seed that's on a mustard plant. And then turmeric. We're going to mix these two together, put a little water in them, and you can either make a paste or you can mix them together and then squeeze the water out of them like we did with the grass. But you can see it creates a nice yellowy color when we mix these two together and a nice paste. So with this, I put it into this little glass as well and I have my turmeric and mustard seed. The next color we're going to make is blue with blueberries. I don't know if you can see very well in the camera, but I'm just going to put it in here and smash them up just like I did with the grass. Now to get real blue is very hard. There's not a lot of things in nature that are blue, but blueberries are close enough. So we're going to put this into our cloth. Then again, squeeze out as much color as we can get. You can probably see this as a little bit more purple than blue, but nonetheless, we get some nice pigment we color. We created all of our pigments in a little bit of water, and we could paint with this if we wanted to, and it would make, it, it would make color on a page. But there are other ways to make it a little bit thicker. You can buy some glazing medium from the, the art store, but I found a less expensive way to do it, and it's something you can find around the house. Honey. 
Honey is a good binder for paints. So let's see what happens. We put a little honey in here and it makes our paint thicker and stickier so that it stays on the page. And mix it all in in each one of your paints. And we'll come back and see what the colors are like. So let's see how our colors turned out. First there's green. And remember that green in grass and other plants is produced through the system of photosynthesis. Plants convert light, sunlight, into energy, into sugar, so that they can grow. And this is a nice green. It turned out very nice. You can see the green. The next one was produced with our blueberries. It doesn't quite look blue. Blue is a hard color to, to find that you can reproduce in nature. But it does have a little bit of a gray color to it. And when it dries, it looks a little bit darker. The next was produced by using camellia flowers, which were really pink, but the color that comes out is not quite as brilliant. It still is, has that little bit of pink or red to it. And again, it looks, gets a little bit darker after it dries. Remember that plants have a DNA that produces the pigment that absorbs everything but the color that you see here. So when light hits it, every color is absorbed by the plant except the red color of light, as you can see with this one. Or the next one, yellow. And remember the yellow was produced using mustard seeds and a little bit of turmeric spice. So we've produced pigments from plants, art and science coming together. I would like you to go out in your yard and see what colors you can find and produce. Remember, it's really simple. You squeeze the colors out after you crush them in a, into a container like a pestle and mortar. Then you add a little bit of honey to give it some body. And then you can paint some beautiful pictures. Here's an example of some of the paint after it's dried a little bit.